Do you dread Monday mornings? Do you feel like your work is a necessary evil that merely provides a paycheck? Well, you're not alone. 80% of workers say they would seek a different job if they thought they could. Author, speaker, television, and radio personality, and life coach Dan Miller is here to help us leave behind the, dr the drudgery and boredom of a dead-end job. He has helped thousands redesign their work and create a career path that matches their passion, interests, and expertise. Dan says that we all have a responsibility Responsibility to spend our working hours in work that will elevate us to our highest calling and transform the world around us. But Dan, I know there's a lot of people watching and they think that just sounds too hard and impossible. Sounded wonderful when you described it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where can I get one of those? Oh. But that's really true. I mean, life is too short. And, and I really believe that we do have a stewardship responsibility in terms of how we use our work life. This separation where, yes, I'm a Christian, but that's Sunday, and then the rest of the week, that's just my work. That's ridiculous. Our work is a m more uh, an example of what we really believe, what we value, than what we do for 58 minutes on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. So it's important. It ought to be meaningful. It mm -hmm. ought to be uh, an expression of our purpose, and it ought to be meaningful, purposeful, and profitable. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to eliminate that either. And Dan, in, in your life, uh, the subtitle, uh, subtitle of your book is Fire Yourself in Other Revolutionary Ways to Discover Your True Calling at Work. Uh, how did you kind of get into this vein and kind of this discovery of the fact that, you know, our, my work can have a purpose and it can be fulfilling and, and satisfying to who I am as a person? Yeah, my, my work really evolved out of doing volunteer counseling through mm -hmm. my church in Nashville, where I discovered that it was not just the 18-year-old who lost a job at Burger King. We were seeing 45 and 50-year-old professionals who were saying, yeah, I'm making money, but am I really on the right track? Mm -hmm. So I started researching this process of really figuring out God's purpose and how to translate that into meaningful work. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the fire yourself is an interesting kind of phrase that I get a lot of comments and questions yeah. about, but here's, here's why I use that. I see a lot of people who just lost their job. So a gentleman this week, he's used to make an exorbitant amount of money, been with the same company for 26 years, just lost his job. Mm -hmm. The knee-jerk reaction, almost without exception, is, oh, I'm going to have to take the kids out of private school, turn back in the car, give up my club membership, those kind of things. Think down. Mm -hmm. But as we look at options and really help them identify the new opportunities in today's workplace, 18 months later, almost without exception, they say, you know what, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm. Mm. If that's really true, my encouragement is don't wait on circumstances to force you right. to take a fresh look. Go ahead and draw that line in the sand and say, am I really in the right place? Mm -hmm. I and mean, you're a different person at 45 than you were at 25. Mm -hmm. God has positioned, prepared you for different things. You ought to look <clears> at that, and it's healthy at any given time to take a fresh look. Do it on your own terms, not waiting till circumstances put Dictated. you in a corner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what are the opportunities that exist out there? You know, we, earlier we talked about just the, the kind of paranoia, fear, the mindset right. that's in the marketplace uh, about the economy as a whole. And, and we think hey, there are no more jobs in America. You know, we've got uh, folks that have come in here and doing the jobs that we won't do and the jobs that we want are all over in, in India and mm. in China right now. So where does that leave the American, uh, the American worker? Well, the workplace is changing, and one of the things that I want to help people understand is that the traditional work model, where you go to work, 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock, get a paycheck, two weeks vacation, 401k contributions, that really is a diminishing model. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Bureau of Labor Statistics predicted by the year 2010, only 50% of the American workforce will be employees. Now, that's of the workforce. Mm -hmm. That means the rest of them are going to be consultants, contingency workers, independent contractors, temps, entrepreneurs, electronic immigrants, all those new terms that are exploding. So the new models may look different than what mom or dad or grandma or grandpa had. Mm -hmm. They are more creative. They're more non-traditional. But there are opportunities that are exploding all around us. Mm -hmm. but, but I think a lot of people are afraid to take risk. How mm -hmm. do you define risk? Uh, risk is a word that we all kind of cringe, in, but, but risk implies having no control. So if you go to Las Vegas and you put the title for your car down on a roll of the dice, that's risky. We don't have any control over the outcome. But if you really have looked at your options and created a careful plan and you're moving into that, that is a dramatic reduction of risk. That's not risk. That's seizing a new opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of things that people would describe as risk, I see as very good 
logical decisions to move forward in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And frankly, people trying to keep things the same way as they were last year is where risk it lies. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mm -hmm. 74,000 gym employees have just got notification. We really want you to take this little bonus package and go away. Yeah. They thought they were secure. Right. But it turns out they weren't. Right. It was risky trying to keep things that were the, the same the way, way they, they were. were. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Uh, what are some of the signs of, you know, discontent? You talk about discontent and that it might not be at all of a bad thing if you're feeling it. But for someone watching today that, you know, maybe has those, those feelings of maybe I'm not doing what I'm my passion and my calling and my desire is to do. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you begin to make that, that transition? The discontent can be a very positive thing. You know, sometimes I talk to people and they're suffering from migraines and back pain and first signs of ulcers and all those horrible things. And they're saying, you know, wow, I just wish God would give me a sign that I need to move on. I'm thinking, what does he have to do? <laughs> you know, what, yeah. what, how does God try to get our attention? So I say, pay attention to that discontent, mm -hmm. to unrest. Mm -hmm. And if it's a recurring thing, take it as an indicator that you need to look at some fresh options. Now, if you look at all the options and it confirms that you've made a great decision, you need to stay where you are, then fine, hold your head high, do it with excellence. But for a lot of people, mm -hmm. they've gotten locked into just status quo and they really do need to look at the new options and take advantage of those. So if someone, you know, I was looking at the list of questions that, that your publishing company sent in. If someone is uncomfortable in the job situation, they know change is imminent, but mm -hmm. don't know what to do next, what do you tell them? I tell them to look inward first. See, 85% of the process of having the confidence of proper direction in our career comes from looking inward. It comes from looking at what God's already told us. It's not a matter of who's hiring, where the job trends are, what the hottest franchises are. Look inward. What are your skills and abilities? Mm -hmm. What are your personality tendencies? What are your values, dreams, and values? What are those recurring things that just keep coming up? Pay attention to those. From those, get a clear sense of what your focus ought to be in life and in work, and then look for applications. And anybody can do that, but we so quickly get the cart before the horse. Just look for the solutions, and it can be a band-aid solution rather than a long-term one. And so no more Mondays. Dan Miller maybe can't show up on your doorstep, but this book can help coach you. If you'd like to connect with Dan, visit us at www.harvest-tv.com and click on Show Info in the menu bar to find an easy way to link to our website. Thank you, Dan, for being with us. we got to have you more back on. I want to hear more about your son. We want to do a story on him.